All right, welcome back. Uh, it's been a while for me. I've been busy working on a few other things, and I haven't had time to get back and do this video. But today we're going to go over creating Gerber files, and I'm going to use this board that we've um, created. We're working on another project. This is a controller for somebody else, and it's just a good example, I guess. So I'm going to come up here to File. Once your board's done, you want to create the Gerber files. That's what you need to send off to the board houses to have your board manufactured. Go to File, go to CAM Processor, and it'll bring up this window. Um, except this will actually be blank. And this is what you'll see. So in Eagle, it has sections. Each one is represented by a tab. And right now we only have one section. And as many sections as you want create a job. Um, and so in Gerber files there are multiple files. Um, there's your your copper files, your silkscreen files, your solder mask files, uh, your drill file. And so you need to create um, a file for each one of those. And an easy way to do that in Eagle is by using a section for each one. So we're going to call this section the component section. And this naming comes from kind of a, just a naming convention that's continued on from back in the day when boards had components on one side, they were soldered on the other. So your component side is your your top side of your board and your layer or your solder layer is your your back side of your board. So we'll call this one component. And to make it as generic as possible, um, give you the file name first, you can go in to Eagle's help and look up these uh, variables to have dynamic file names. But I'm gonna say percent %p, that gives you the path of your board file. Put in a slash and go to a subdirectory called Gerber's. You need to create that. Eagle won't create it for you. Then we go percent %n. That'll give you the name of your file without the .brd on it. And then say .cmp for component. And for device, the board houses that I've dealt with and that I've looked up all use Gerber RS-274X um, style files. So there's that. We're going to come up here to layer, deselect all, and for this component side we want the top, we want the pads, and we want the vias. And that's what our top copper layer consists of. So we're going to go ahead and say add. It's going to bring up another tab. It's just going to duplicate whatever you had there. We're going to call this one solder. Same device, just that the file extension for this one is .sol. And as to the top, we have the bottom. Now the pads and vias stay in both because the copper for the pads and the vias needs to be on both the top and the bottom layers. So we click on add, go to the next one. This one we're going to do our um, our silk screen. So I'm going to call it top silk, or we could say component silk to go ahead and stay with the naming convention. And we're going to call this one um, dot .plc. For this one, though, we're going to go with dimension, T place, and T names. And one thing about the names is they all need to be um, in vector fonts. Uh, if you have any of the other style of fonts, then it'll convert them to vector, and sometimes they'll stretch them out or skew them, and, and it'll end up looking a little funny. So if you just make sure all your fonts are in vectors, then you'll be okay. Um, and we're going to go to the, the next one. We're going to call this the solder silk and it's called PLS and instead of T place and T name we still want dimension we just want B place and B names so we'll go ahead and say add and next we're going to go to our stop masks so we're going to call this uh, component stop and now we don't want any of these we just want T stop and this one is actually STC for component stop. Um, go to our solder stop. And again, these, these layers create the stop masks, uh, your, your solder masks. Make it easier to solder. Call it, we're going to take B stop on this one. And finally, for two layer boards, this is really all you need. It's your drill files. And 
for this you actually need to select Exelon as your device. Um, some places use a, a binary format of some sort. It, it's a little old and so you probably won't run into that but just to be aware of that that you need to make sure that you're using the, the correct devices. Um, and I call this NCD for NC drill file. For this we just want the drills and the holes. And there you go. So you can come up here and you can say file, save job, uh, call it generic or standard or whatever you want to call it. Uh, apparently I already made that one. Um, and now you can come in and any board that you create, you can just load this job back up, create the Gerber's directory in whatever directory you're using, and just come down here and click process job. Um, I already created the Gerber's directory ahead of time, so there we go. Now it's now it's created our Gerber files. So then what we do is you want to have a Gerber viewer, uh, and this is you know made even more important by 5.1. If you didn't notice all the uh, pop-ups that would pop up in 5.1, there were some problems with the CAM processor, and and we noticed that in uh, this board in particular or one of its revisions. Uh, so if we go to where we save the files, come down here to Eagle, Fire Pit, Gerber's, select them all. It'll know which ones it cares about. Hit open, and it'll give you your Gerber files, um, the way that the board house is going to see them. So in 5.1, we had this kind of funny looking arc over here. Um, not what we wanted in the board for sure, but the board house would have gone ahead and routed it just like the Gerber files said because, you know, they they don't know what your design is supposed to be so you need to check these once you've created them and, and this Gerber viewer is pretty handy there's a link on the website for it so if you go to www.ece101.com you'll see it um, and there's also a couple other links that I'll probably throw up um, good resources but if you come in here you can look at how your how your Gerber files actually turned out and what the board house will see so if we just want to look at uh, the copper traces. Then we go ahead and deselect the silk screen, deselect the solder masks, and the drills. And this is this is the copper you're going to get. So you're gonna, we're going to have this plane over here. We're going to have all these traces running all over the place. Uh, if you just want to look at your silk screen, come over here to your PLC and PLS. Uh, there's really not much on the back side. The back side just has that little circle and the, the, the dimensions to the board. And that's really it. So you zip all these files up, send them off to your board house, and they'd go ahead and fabricate your board based on these files. Um, just something to notice, this C2, the 2 is going to get cut in half when they go to put the silk screen down. You might not even get the 2 at all. You might just get the C. Um, just because, you know, it depends on how close to the edge they can get. Not all board houses will go clear to the edge. So that's about it. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and um, go to www.ece101.com, leave a comment on this post, or email me chris at ece101.com. And let me know if you have any questions for further topics. Um, in, the, in the future, I'm going to be going over a few things that I've touched on in previous posts, but that deserve a little bit more attention and a little bit more uh, time on on explaining them and, and really understanding what's going on there. So thanks again.